I'd like to show you some Rio Express G308 remote I.O. devices. These things are kind of cool. They're designed for zero programming required. Um, you can um, eliminate wires. If you have a stretch where um, wires are prohibitive, you can get two of these. They've obviously got radios built in. And you can wire one up to your controller, your PLC or your RTU. We've got four discrete inputs, four discrete outputs, two analog inputs, two analog outputs, and the discrete inputs are mirrored to the discrete outputs over here, and vice versa. Same with the analogs. So um, you can control things up to a thousand feet, thousand yards, depending on what type of antennas you have. If you really need some distance, you can get a higher gain antenna, and you can go up to 10 miles. These are 900 megahertz. These are also rated class 1 div 2, so you can use these in explosive atmospheres like oil and gas. These devices intentionally are really easy to set up with zero programming. All you have to do is make sure your pair of devices are on the same address. So um, this is the sum of values, so if we turned on 1 and 2, our address would be 3. We just have to duplicate that over here. And then one needs to be a master and one needs to be a slave. So I'm going to turn this one on to be a master. And that's really all you have to do to get them to work together. So let's go ahead and power these guys up. Now you'll see they start communicating with each other. They're going really fast. If uh, you want to save a little bit of battery, you can change the pull rate a little bit. So now it's just going every second. Um, you can read the instructions for more details on pull rate. Essentially the master just pulls the slave and the slave responds. I've got some switches and analogs. In so we can do some real testing here. So how this works is the discrete inputs mirror to the discrete outputs of the other one. These discrete ins go to this discrete out. So if I start turning on these inputs, you'll see they come on over here. And then the same over here, if we turn on input over here, turns on over here. So you can see how this is an easy, no programming way to do remote I.O. Um, essentially wire replacement. Your RTU can wire into one, and then over here your end devices can uh, wire into the other one. Let's go ahead and look at the analogs real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and start turning this potentiometer so the, the analog input is getting more voltage over here. You should see this uh, LED over here change brightness. So let's just try to do a little bit. There's a whole lot. You can also turn this guy over here. See our LED over there gets brighter and brighter as we turn this one over here. So there's another way to use the G308, and that is to just put it into a slave mode, Modbus slave, and you can get a master radio. This is a G306 master radio. And you can connect to this radio and pull up to 64 uh, 308s that are within, you know, wireless range of each other. Typically what you would do is you would um, plug this master radio in next to a PLC or an RTU and then pull all these uh, using Modbus, but right now I'm using a uh, port server, so I don't have to actually connect to the serial port. I'm going over uh, Ethernet. So you could pull it from anywhere. So I set up a uh, SCADA host system here to demonstrate this. Um, this HMI is ignition. Uh, which is an industrial SCADA host 
and the polling engine is ACM which is doing Modbus RTU over TCP IP. So I'm going to demonstrate the analog inputs on this guy. I'm going to tweak up number two. You should see this value increase. And I'll turn up number one all the way. And on this one I'll demonstrate turning on the discrete inputs. So I'll start turning them on. You'll see the little check boxes starting to be come on here. So starting with the bottom, so DI1. And then the LEDs lit here. So one, two, three, and four. And then I can also turn on the discrete outputs. Looking at the documentation, you can do a few more things as well if you're um, polling using Modbus. So um, you can read the power supply voltage or, you know, if you're on battery power, that could be important. Um, there are totalizers and rates. So let's say you had something that pulses very quickly. Um, you might miss it in the pulse cycle. So um, a totalizer increments up and you, you can't miss um, that something happened there that way. And also totalizers are used with uh, pulse meters. So it's a turbine with a magnetic pickup and it pulses as stuff flows. So um, you can monitor the flow rate there. You can see the code version, power down time, confail time. There's also this time digital output, which um, imagine if you wanted the discrete out to pulse for at least two seconds and only two seconds, well, um, this time digital output, you write a, an integer value to it and then um, it would trigger that output for that amount of time. And this way you know it can't hang open if there's a comm failure or something like that. And um, for more information, you can uh, read about it over at g3ti.com.